Hey YouTube, Freddy for Cass here. Hey, what's going on everybody? I hope you're having a good day, a good night, wherever you're at. Hey, I'm just going to make a, a video here today, and I'm going to continue on covering the Japan thing, but I'm going to make this video really quick. I'm going to let the links do most of the talking, and there's going to be a little clip at the end of the video. So uh, go ahead and feel free to check out the links, and then, uh, like I said, I'm just going to get right to the point here, So, so let's do that. Um, Japan's Prime Minister now is saying that there is a, uh, a fourth reactor at the Fukushima nuclear power plant that's on fire, and this is true. Um, you know, there's a lot going on here in, uh, you know, uh, three of the nuclear power plants are, are leaking radiation as it is, and I think that the media is just majorly downplaying the, the amount of release of the radiation and things like that, and it's... It's gotten pretty bad over there in Japan, and in fact, it's gotten so bad that uh, the citizens within the first 20 kilometers or 13 miles of the epicenter are, are just totally told to just leave their home and just go. And um, if if you're in the area of that to, uh, you know, 30 kilometers or 17 miles, uh, you're told to stay in your house. It's just lock the doors, lock the windows. Don't turn the air conditioning on. Don't turn the heat on. They don't want you to circulate the air in your house. They just want you to just be at your house and don't do anything. Stay in your house and that's about it. So again, that's really tough on the Japanese people, um, especially since there is a shortage of, of food and water and it's hard for them to find the, the people that are missing right now and people who might be deceased in the rubble. Um, and again, just touching on the USS Ronald Reagan, I mean, they were even affected by the radiation. So again, you know, I, I think our, 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 our government and the Japanese government is downplaying the amount of severity with this too. And again, check the links. Um, I'm going to have several links down here. And, you know, with everything that's going on, you know, the explosions and everything that's going, I mean, you know, when when there's an explosion, you know, that radiation is going into the air. So, I mean, you know, you, you can't think that that it's not. And, and uh, you know, just like an example right here, water, water levels have dropped inside one of the reactors uh, Monday inside a stricken Japanese nuclear reactor, twice leaving the uranium fuel rods completely exposed and raising the threat of a meltdown hours after a hydrogen explosion tore through the building's housing at a different reactor. Well, when you move the housing, that's when, you know, some of the radiation can get through the housing, but if you have a, a crack or a, a break or it, just a piece blown out because of the explosion, that radiation is going right into the air. So, I mean, again, this is why I say that they're downplaying the radiation. I think it's a lot worse than, than, than what they say. And here's proof it says... Uh, the container damaged radiation leak feared at Fukushima number two reactor. Again, another link about the damage that's going on there. Um, you know, and again, more links about the number four reactor that's on fire and, and the things that are going with that. So again, you know, check that out. And, um, you know, they're just moving as many people as fast as they possibly can. And, and you know, they're checking, they're scanning people. And here's... Here's something I found really interesting. I, I did not know that the, the, the rate scale for an, a nuclear accident was only from 1 to 7. And uh, 1 being, you know, minor, 7 being the absolute worst possible thing that can happen. And they are rating this Japanese accident between a 5 and a 6 on the scale of 1 to 7. Well, if you do the math, and 7 being 100%, okay... Five puts you at a category of 70%, and six puts you at a category of 85% of the 100%, which makes up the level seven accident, okay? So if you're looking at an accident scenario of 70% to 85%, that's pretty high. That's that's a pretty serious um, uh, uh, problem there, you know? With, you know, if, if you know... It, 70% to 85% in an event uh, disaster like this is just huge. 
especially the, what you're dealing with, you know, nuclear energy and nuclear fallout and things like that. But anyway, again, like I said, the links are underneath. Um, and here's something I just want to touch on real quick. And like I said, there's going to be a, um, a, a little clip here at the end here. You know, they're kind of comparing this to the Chernobyl accident. And again, there was... Um, there was some problems with the Chernobyl accident. I don't want to get into that. There will be some verbiage underneath and, check and read that as well. But um, the Chernobyl accident happened in 1986, and they had birth problems and cancer problems all the way until 1998. It wasn't until 1998 when the the, the, the ratio of cancer and birth effects start, finally started to go down. In 1998, and the accident, the Chernobyl accident actually happened in 1986. So there was a large gap there for all this radiation fallout to just totally affect two generations of people in that part of the world. So, my, and that's my point, is that the reason why they're downplaying this so much is because they don't want to get everyone to be in a mass panic. I mean, think about it. Okay, let's say that, that the radiation doesn't get to the mainland of the United States. Okay, it's going to fall into the ocean or it's going to get into the jet stream. Okay, now let's say, okay, let's say let the ocean, for example. Okay, is that going to affect sea life? Is that going to affect ocean plant life? Is that radiation going to go through the, uh, the sea current, which goes up towards Russia, over, the, over to Alaska, and then back down through Canada? I mean, is that radiation going to affect the salmon industry, the fishing industry, and all the, the king crabs that are up there? I mean, think about that. If that radiation gets into those animals, are we going to be ingesting that radiation? It's a good question. I mean, it really is. I mean, you know, if, if you can give me an answer to it, you know, a good solid answer with a good solid lead, not just something that the multimedia says or anything else, you know, but... You know, like I said, I just think they're downplaying. I think it's, I think it is worse than what they're really saying. But anyway, um, I'm gonna leave this off with a clip. Check the links, and let's pray for Japan. Let's hope and pray that uh, everything gets better over there, and let's hope and pray that nothing really happens over here either. You know, they didn't ask for this, so power of prayer it does work. I know it does. God bless everyone. Sean Burney, an independent nuclear energy consultant uh, from Scotland. Mr. Burney, many thanks for being with us here on the channel. Uh, now, we, uh, we now know that uh, uranium robs at reactor number two at the Fukushima plant were fully exposed for some period of time. How dangerous is that? Uh, that is one of the nuclear industry's worst nightmares. Uh, the consequences are that the fuel is no longer being cooled. So you have very energetic nuclear fuel. Within this core, within the reactor, we estimate maybe 80 to 90 tons of highly radioactive fuel. It will be heating up uh, over a period of time, over hours. It will get to a point during which it will be producing gases. Uh, those gases will be building up pressure inside the pressure vessel in unit two. Um, and the question is, at what point will they not be able to retain the pressure and there could possibly be a third explosion. And uh, Japan is widely perceived as being one of the most technologically advanced nations and now we're seeing them really struggling to cool down these reactors for a third day. Why is that? Uh, I don't think any advanced industrialized society could have coped uh, with what we've experienced in the last four days. One of the problems in Japanese culture uh, is at, a, at a, a societal and government level is this faith in technology. And the problem is with nuclear power, these are technologies that were developed in the immediate aftermath of the Second World War. Uh, they were designed, these type of reactors were actually designed uh, for use in nuclear submarines. Uh, Admiral Richthofen uh, who was the creator of the nuclear navy in the United States, uh, he concluded that the design of a reactor to fit into the small confined space of a submarine was not the basis for a nuclear power program. And that's a, unfortunately where we have around 445 of these reactors around the world. So the technology is decades old. The society, the government, the regulators believe that the technology can be operated safely and if you visit Fukushima as I have on a number of occasions 
it looks very sophisticated. Uh, I'm sure the workers there are absolutely dedicated to their job, but there's a built-in psychological complacency that if you're operating something that's so inherently dangerous, when you go to work every day, do you keep thinking about how dangerous that technology is? That would be, over time, rather damaging psychologically. So in other words, they convince themselves that they've mastered this technology. And unfortunately, with nuclear power, uh, there's no second chance. Well, you earlier described uh, the situation in Japan as a nightmare. And despite these blasts, the government in Japan is insisting that safety levels are fine and that there's no health risk. It's obvious that they don't want to cause panic. That's understandable. But are they really giving us the whole story here? No, they're absolutely not giving the whole story. They probably don't know the whole story themselves, uh, even though it's only in Tokyo, which is relatively close to Fukushima. Uh, over many years, the nuclear industry and the regulators in Japan, but also in every society, every country that operates nuclear power, you find consistently that there's a lack of transparency, a lack of openness. Maybe they just think, I think arrogantly, that, that's too much information. Why should we provide that information? So I think the situation in Japan is absolutely critical. Uh, the state of the fuel at the reactor number three that exploded last night, we know that for many hours, half of the core was exposed. So there's a very strong possibility that the fuel that has melted has already moved down the reactor pressure vessel and is now at the base of that reactor vessel. That is co That could cause huge problems and of course, major radiological releases. But remember, according to international standards, there is no safe threshold for man-made radiation. So any dose, including the dose that hit the sailors on board USS Ronald Reagan, that can have health consequences. Well, They're not going to drop down dead but uh, in, on, on the ship, but the, the idea that to communicate that there's no risk from any radiation is clearly wrong. Well, let's just clarify what you're saying there and let's go back to those two explosions that uh, we've already experienced on the Fukushima plant. Uh, apparently, um, released radioactive substances, uh, well, radioactive substances were released into the atmosphere as a result of those blasts. What sort of danger does that pose? Well, certainly the, the particulates, these are the larger size of, uh, of nuclear materials, radionuclides, they will be falling out relatively close to the plant. What you will find further away uh, are the so-called fission gases. Uh, these are highly mobile, very, very small. They basically rapidly disperse and it really depends upon the wind, the weather system. If you have rain, which is predicted in the next 12 hours, uh, any radionuclides that are coming out, there'll be a local concentration. When it's dry, and over the coming days, it's dry weather is predicted, then you can have more rapid dispersal over a longer distance. And the latest I've heard is, of course, that the wind direction is switching from the north to the south, which is bad news for Tokyo, uh, because Tokyo is only an hour away. And what's fascinating uh, and terrifying of this situation is the French government uh, through their embassy in Tokyo advised French citizens because of the seriousness of the situation which they said cannot be predicted and will not be known for a number of days yet okay. they advised French citizens to leave the uh, Kanta region which is metropolitan Tokyo uh, Gumi and other areas around Tokyo uh, that's maybe fine for the French citizens, but there's 42 million people living there. 